Krishna Mission uh, Vivekananda Centenary College Rahola, Rahola is organizing a seminar on towards quantum intelligence. So first of all, uh, we are very much thankful, thankful to our uh, principal Maharaj to organize such an important topic, important seminar. So now I am requesting to our principal Maharaj to felicitate our distinguished guest, Dr. Amlan Chakraborty. <coughs> So uh, we are now requesting our principal Maharaj to deliver his uh, uh, welcome speech. So most respected uh, Professor Amlan Chakraborty and uh, my dear colleagues and uh, my very dear students of computer science department. So uh, today we are here to uh, hear uh, about uh, the talk what Dr. Chakraborty will deliver and it is a very interesting topic. Sir actually the director of A.K. Choudhury School of Information Technology Calcutta University but before that he has a vast background in corporate world. Now he is in teaching field so he is a person of versatile Past knowledge of corporate world as well as a teaching field. And now he is the in charge of government of India, so many projects and very now the emerging project I think all you have seen. I do not know how, how many have heard. I, I have, I first read in newspaper. The, I, this is, he is now the in charge of the West Bengal government, this project that is uh, uh, excellence in uh, AI and uh, data science. How many have heard? Raise your hand. Oh, I, I, okay, okay, very good. I thinking that nobody have listened her chat. So his, so you can understand his uh, knowledge domain. Government uh, actually given uh, the right person the right duty. So he's uh, not only a good teacher but he has a great corporate world background. So for, for this pers per perspective, his de discussion regarding this AI and its future perspectives, I think it will be a great help to you. Because he is uh, very competent in this field and uh, I request to all the students, you uh, listen all his talk because he is a good teacher. Your uh, one or two elder brothers means the uh, your predecessor they are actually uh, him, uh, working uh, with sir lab so the and uh, sir also told that they, he is uh, he or he is a good student so in future you also can get uh, chance for internship but condition you have to prove it you have to prove it because uh, uh, we cannot recommend any student uh, to sir that you can go there to do internship. You have to prove that yes, you are uh, capable to do this. If uh, you are prove, uh, you can prove it, then I can uh, assure uh, in front of sir and sir also like the good student. So uh, with this uh, few words, I, I tell students especially, you after the talk, you please interact with him. Uh, that uh, sir, uh, what is the uh, uh, telling? I could not understand this. 
because he's a teacher at uh, overall so if you interact with him i think it is a good uh, gesture for our gathering otherwise uh, not it is uh, i could not expect that you just this uh, sitting and uh, just dodging or somehow wasting the time of uh, one hour i do not like this so i uh, request uh, each and every second you utilize because i know that whatever he will tell every word sentence will be knowledgeable to him so i do not uh, spend that time too much i once second welcome sir and express my heartiest regard to him for coming over here i actually he come here to attend a meeting of our board of studies and he also agreed to deliver this talk so with this few word once second i once uh, express my heartiest regard on, on behalf of all department faculty and also you and uh, i request him to deliver his talk Okay. Thank you very much, our principal Maharaj. Uh, just going to uh, to the uh, entire program. I am just going to uh, briefly about uh, the um, uh, entire uh, thing. Uh, that, that is our guest, uh, uh, Dr. Pramila Chakraborty, have uh, completed. He is a professor and the director of the A.K. Choudhury School of Information Technology at the University of Com uh, Calcutta. He is also the former Dean Faculty of Engineering and Technology of his university during 2016 to 2019. He completed MTech from the University of Calcutta 2001 and did a postdoctoral fellow at the School of Engineering, Princeton University, USA during 2011-2012. He has almost 20 years of experiments in engineering education and research. He received the DST Boys Cost uh, Boys Cast Fellowship Award in Engineering Science 2011, Indian National Science Academy INSA Visiting Faculty Fellowship 2014, JSPS Invention Research Award 2016, Eramas uh, Mandas Leaders Award 2017, Hamid Visiting uh, Professorship from University of Cambridge UK 2018, uh, specially Siksha Ratno Award by Department of Higher Education, Government of West Bengal in 2018 and IBM Quantum Researchers Awards, uh, Access Award in 2021. He has received multiple uh, projects grants in the areas of embedded systems design, VLSI design, quantum computing, computer vision, cyber security, IoT from funding agencies like DST, METI, DRDO, DAE, Ministry of Social Employment, UGC, TCS, India, Intel India, etc. He has also served in various capacities in various higher uh, education organizations both at national and international levels. He has published around 160 plus research papers in referred journals and conferences, four patents and one copyright and have granted have graduated 16 phd students till date he is an associate editor of the elsevier journal of computers and uh, electoral engineers uh, series editor of springer transactions on computer systems and networks and guest editor of the springer journal of applied science sciences etc so we are very much thankful uh, to uh, getting uh, such important person with us for a few hours. So now uh, I uh, I am very much, uh, I am uh, talking, uh, sir, please uh, come to here and uh, say something about this uh, uh, seminar. Thank you, sir. Yeah, so very good afternoon to all the students. Uh, uh, thank you, Maharaj Principal, sir, and uh, thank you, the coordinator of this computer science department, Maharaj. Uh, so my dear students, right, that means I know some of you because some of you visit my uh, department, right, and interact with, uh, with me. Uh, one of your uh, okay, senior pastoral student is also now, uh, now a student of Calcutta University, computer science. He interacts with me very often and he was also working with me when he was a student here, Shayun. Okay, so, so I am getting very good students here and I have a very good, uh, what I can say, I have a uh, okay, very good thought about okay this particular institute okay because i believe that these institutes are really really institutes where you can actually 
uh, practice learning. So learning is a practice, right? And the practice shouldn't stop, right? Once you stop the practice of learning, you are not a student, you are not a teacher, okay? And a teacher is always a student, right? Uh, okay, we, we also have to learn. It's not that being a teacher, being a professor will stop learning. We, we are also trying to learn, but we try to learn in different way than what you, because you have to learn the fundamentals, okay? We at your age, focused on fundamentals. Fundamentals are whatever we do, quantum computing, 5G, parallel processing, high performance computing, right? Whatever we do, right, in life, right? In your, in computer science or technology or science, right? Ultimately, the fundamental knowledge works, okay? All fundamental knowledge can be stretched and can be extended, okay, to those particular hi-fi technologies, right? And this is the right time in your college, right? In a very good college, one of the, top rated college in our state, in our country, right? You are very lucky, okay, to get a, get a seat here, right? And do this particular BSc computer science course. Now, uh, right, obviously computer science is now the, what I can say, the most, uh, okay, most sought about subjects among the students, okay? Be in engineering, be in science, right? If you see the seats in engineering streams, right? Right, the engineering, Colleges are opening various computer science courses, okay? Right, okay. the other streams are getting little bit less students. Similarly, in our, in our undergraduate courses also, undergraduate science courses also, right, we see that there is a enormous, enormous, uh, okay, that is the students are interested, right, to get into the computer science course. Now, that, now the thing is, uh, this is good or bad? This is good or bad, who can answer? This enormous focus on computer science in the student level, okay, I'm interacting with a student, maybe, uh, maybe I will interact for five, 10 minutes and then I will go to my talk and I will finish in 20, 15 minutes, okay? So, so let's try to understand that this enormous focus on computer science, right? Okay, whether it is good or bad, or it is a, that means, okay, it makes life easier for you or life tougher for you, being the students? Uh huh. Tough, why tough? Good answer, why tough? Yes, because you have a lot of students at their computer science. That means, I'm uh, that means Banglai Boli, I'm a Banglai Boli, machine learning expert. Child Dogani machine learning. That's the way machine learning has come up, right? Everybody, everybody has stopped everything and now doing machine learning. Whatever they either they know or don't know or trying to know or they know very well, well, okay, everybody is doing machine learning now. So similarly, computer science has also come up in this particular uh, way that everybody, everybody is doing computer science course. The computer science course has been stretched in different forms. Okay, but the advantage is that computer science also gives you to exposure to some of the very upcoming technologies. Okay, like why, why people are towards computer science? Because the computer science has progressed in a very, very fast pace. Right, others engineering have also progressed, but but for that you have to invest a lot of equipment costs. Right, in computer science we can use a cloud, right, and we can do a lot of computing without having the infrastructure at my place. In all other all other engineering or science, you require the infrastructure to be in your place, and that's why it is becoming very tough for the academic institutions to keep the pace in those particular subjects, in basic science or basic engineering. Right, but, uh, but still computer science, we can make the subjects very good. We can improve the subjects and we are making the, all the subjects which are, the st which are required. Like we, that means in, in this syllabus of your college where I am a BOS member, we have incorporated lot of subjects which are cutting edge. Because we know that there will be resources available. The computing resources will be available in some way, right? And students will able to access those. Right, and there are enough faculties from industries and from research consortia who can help the students to get into this. Okay, and that's one of the way the compu quantum computing came in this particular college. I tried to push the students a bit, right? I think uh, the computer vision is also driving computer vision. So these are some of the things which you have to take because computer science have so many attractive domains now. Okay, each of the domains, if you see, right, if you see text analytics, so interesting, it has just, text analytics people were only thinking that NLP will be, uh, that means uh, NLP is only the start and end of text analytics. Suddenly LLM came, 
right in the i think the last uh, okay two years and now it is heavily there everywhere and now in any conference you see that people from other domains are trying to exploit llm because llm is such a particular model where you can actually okay train a particular corpus okay make a sort of okay make the make that particular system a helper to your process right it can be a query and you can get an answer so this thing is possible because computer science has come up and that particular thing has been there like if you see computer vision a computer vision where we actually worked along in our if you if you look into my my research and my, and my lab i have graduated i think almost including who will be graduating very soon it will be around five six students have graduated with me in computer vision but now computer vision is getting into a new direction right computer vision is getting a sort of a direction where the frame rates are pretty high now resolutions are pretty high now we are going to vr vr type of stuff okay we are doing the 3d okay 3d videos right for the biomedical and other so there are there are things which are moving up in very very high scale right so this movements and this type of activities okay both in research and in industry right for that right we require a lot of students okay the, okay say quantum computing iot right uh, okay, okay high performance computing okay these are these are the new age computing paradigms okay uh, okay where the students should get trained okay now what are the challenges the challenges is that you need to learn not more now okay the way we used to learn we are very relaxed okay because the things were not pretty okay pretty top heavy okay we were in the bottom mostly okay but now the things are very top heavy okay right right and when you start you are at the bottom when you are in the college but you have to come up into that level okay, so that a person can identify you okay, identify you as a as a maybe a good parallel programmer maybe an hpc or maybe a computer vision guy maybe a text analytics guy right um, okay maybe okay okay let's say an iot expert okay quantum computing person so something people have to identify yourself when you come up after four or maybe after you do masters or maybe when you come up to phd okay so this is the challenge okay for all of you because these are all very super hi-fi stuff okay but that's why computer science is an opportunity if you are that means if you are motivated to to actually do something good because there are a lot of opportunities are there but but the but computer science is bad for those students who only feel that okay getting a computer science degree will make my life very smooth no that will not happen because for that level so many students you have to compete so many students are just getting computer science degree for sake of computer just getting a level of computer science without getting into any of this any of these deep technological thoughts i don't want to that Okay, at college you don't expect to get into the real real thing of the of those deep technologies but at least you have to have the basics so that you can understand when you are given a work in this particular technology when i give you a work in quantum computing or when you give a work in computer vision or i give you a work in llm right you should have the basics right basics clear in terms of how the how the algorithm converts to a program how the multi thread programming works how the memory is handled right how the how the basic mathematical uh, okay that means how the uh, okay, mathematics of the kernel functions work right all these things you should be very clear then i can take you to those particular directions right where where any expert can take you right? either in a industry or in a research okay so but if i cannot take you to that level if you are just a programmer right then your life is very tough okay because you don't have don't have the capability to rise to that deep tech levels okay so that way you should prepare all of you who are who are doing this who are in this particular good institute should prepare yourself in such a way a baselines are so good right in mathematical fundamentals algorithmic fundamentals the basics of computer science in terms of maybe database networks okay it's algorithm computer architecture which we say software engineering which we say these are the fundamental courses okay programming data structure algorithm computer architecture okay database computer networks okay software engineering okay these are the fundamentals of computer science you need to have this these courses to be 
finished maybe within those who are three year students i hope they have uh, they will finish within two years and then they will go in the third year they will go with some sort of projects or some sort of deep uh, deep tech type of things the people who are in the four year bsc code they have a little bit easier life uh, because they have one more year to work on the research and they can concentrate on this uh, um, okay three years fully on basic and some advanced courses and they can really go for a very good research in the fourth year okay so okay but but i think three years will coming out uh, soon so they can okay they can test the success sooner four years will be coming up later okay but i think this is a very a very good a very good scenario for the computer science students right who have lot of actually lot of requirements comes from industries and research labs to me and the people like me from okay different okay okay yeah so organizations in the in the in the state or in the city a lot of lot of requirements comes okay for good students okay fine and those who are four years bsc they can directly go to phd fine those who have joined as a four years bsc right those who are good students right and have done a project okay, they can directly go to phd in some good institutes and that will obviously is a right is a really and i think that people from phd will uh, uh, people who want phd student will prefer your your background uh, okay than a very normal btech background fine i'm very sure i have i have i have spoken with many of the institutes and they said that yes that means uh, that means a good institute bsc computer science has a greater okay that means has a greater opportunity right or we will prefer them okay okay than a normal btech getting into the okay and for the overseas also and for the overseas also the four years bsc program is is now do, will do very good because four years uh, because after because the previous three years bsc couldn't go to abroad because you re, uh, require a 10 plus 2 plus 4 okay years of course right and so the previous three years bsc has to do at least one year's course or a two years master's program or to get directly into the phd program right but the i think now the four years BSc can directly go to the PhD program and I think you should target some of you who wants to do research right and who wants to do higher studies uh, they should target okay from now on maybe from the second year onwards okay they should try and they should try to find out what are the things I can get into those okay uh, so any questions from the students on their that means how they should uh, the plan and motivate because I give this and okay it's one thing one thing I want to say that uh, one one question I want to throw so uh, so what is what is easy and what is hard in your in your that means as far as your uh, okay that means uh, okay it's a concept or something you have to implement or design right what is easy and what is hard who can answer Kotin ki, Shaoj ki, Banglai bolchi. What is what is easy and what is hard? Yes, please. No, if you understand, okay, why you cannot implement? There is no. There may be a resource. Okay, there may be a resource constraints. Okay, maybe there. Okay, but that okay, that is not your hardness. That is your that means that is you don't get the support, right? Okay, okay. So any answer why i'm asking this because students sometimes comes to me at if i don't tell them that this is very very hard concept sir okay because normally my students know that whatever things i deal with they are little bit hard things okay not so easy things okay so yes so so why that means what is what is the thing you that make the things hard for you Okay. Uh, <coughs> yeah. Bangla bolo na. Kono shubhidari. Fine. So let me tell. Let me tell the answer. So, so if you understand the thing very well, then it is that it is very easy to you. Okay. Right. If your understanding is not there, then the things are completely Hebrew. We say, right? It is not there. Okay. So, so those are the hard things which you don't understand, right? So now only the effort what you have to take is that you have to take effort to to understand the things. 
Okay, so you can see that some concept is very easy for someone, right? And something is very hard for someone because the person who understands that, right, is very easy for him or her. But person who doesn't understand, right, is a tough thing for him or her. Okay, so the thing is that, right, and that means again I say one particular, one particular thing that, okay, okay, suppose, suppose a uh, five rupees drop from your pocket, okay, what you will do? Okay, you will search this particular room. Suppose you just get out of this room and just to find that, okay, I have lost five rupees from my pocket. Okay, so you just search this room. Okay, and you do, if you don't get, okay, five rupees, no problem. Okay, right, if 50 rupees gets lost from your pocket, right, then you will go up and down in the stairs of the college. Yeah, I will come to that. I will come to that. Yeah, one answer. So, so, so 50 rupees, 50 rupees, you will just, you will just make a good effort to actually run up and down and look into the stairs, right? If 500 rupees, okay, lost, right, then you will go to the, that up to the entire campus of the college and try to find where it has lost. Okay, 5,000 rupees lost, you may actually search the entire city, call the police, all the things, right? So the issue is that the effort you take in your life is depends on what, what value you give to that. Why I'm comparing this, so 50 rupees is a direct value I am telling. So 5 rupees has a smaller value, 50 higher, 500 higher, 5,000 higher. So this, this rupees is immaterial. It is the thing that means what you give value in your life. Right, so if you give value in your life a particular thing that, okay, I, I, I feel that this is, my, this is the thing what I have to achieve, right? And, and in my life, I give a highest value to this particular achievement. Then you can do anything. Then time is not the factor, resource is not the factor, right? You can still achieve a lot many things. So, so, the, so, the, so the thing is that you have to... So when a student comes in a very casual way and tells us, sir, I don't know when was the exam date, sir, what was the course says. So I, so I tell that what you, are, what you are not giving, you forget about giving the value to the university, value to the course. You are not giving value to yourself. You are a person, right, who are supposed to get a degree, right, in computer science, right, after four years and with come up with, a, with some sort of parameters or some sort of attractive parameters. Right, as you are not giving your value to yourself, okay, okay. So when you come out, you will be, you will be just like a very, a very normal person who doesn't looks like a computer science knowledgeable person. Okay, so what it means that you are not giving value to you, so forget what what others will give value to you. And you grow in life. Growing life doesn't only mean uh, okay means money or position. Growing life means that that means what level of mentality you achieve. Okay, what is your mental condition is actually the growing in life. So, so that your mental condition will be good if we find people gives you value. Value doesn't mean again paying some money to you. Value, value means respect. Okay, if you are respected, right, your mental esteem is pretty high. And you get respected because, because, because we are in the path of knowledge path. Right, so, you, so, so if you have knowledge, Right, you will get expected, but knowledge is very hard to acquire. It is not absorbed casually. Casually, any good thing cannot absorb. So one is so one question. I just I just was in Sanjeevas College, I think three days ago. So, so after my talk, okay, a student gave a, a, a okay, that was a very beautiful question, sir. When I that means I said that you try to learn the mathematics of the models, try to understand how the kernel functions works, right? And when you try to tell the research, you have to do some contribution in the model itself. Okay, it's only running the model on a data set and telling that way it worked, it, it, is, not, it is not a research in that. Okay, it may be a good project, but it's not research. Research means new contribution to the, to the knowledge domain. Then sir said, that means, that means okay, sir, want to give any value to a person who is just, um, okay, so, okay uh, taking our data, running a model and something. I say that uh, when you go to a dinner, right, there are different menus. Okay, first it starts with a chat masala or a fuchka, right, or a sort of dahi bada, which is very tasty, which you can, which you can quickly consume. Okay, but, but with that you start, but ultimately you have to finish the dinner because if you only go away of the dinner by taking the chat masala or fuchka, you will miss the, the, you will miss the good food which is there. Rice may be there, fish may be there, good curry may be there, meat may be there. 
So okay, you can start with just trying up models and testing the data, that's okay. But if you don't actually get into the models, you will not get that food. If you don't get that food, you will not get that particular knowledge. Okay, that knowledge is missing from you. So you, so you haven't tested a good food. So that's the way knowledge develops. There may be some surface knowledge which you have to first acquire, but you have to get deeper because that is the first part of your course. You have to go to second, third and fourth so that your stomach is fulfilled and similarly your knowledge is fulfilled, right? And then your, then your dinner or lunch is complete. So that mentality you should, you should have in your thought process that I have to acquire this knowledge. Right? It's not that I will just have a surface on the knowledge, okay? So I end up my motivational lecture here. If you have any question, I can answer. I will just give a, so my actual technical talk will be a little bit, I think we are, we are in shortage of time. So I will just give a very, uh, okay, very brief thing what I am, okay, trying to put, put to all of you, okay? So, so this is obvious, I have one question, yeah, please. Yes. How should I explore the fields or should I go for the what is booming right now in these computer science? Lot of things will be changing. And then you come out after three years, four years, a lot of things will be changing, right? You give a very, very focus on the on the mathematical components, the, the coding component, hydrogen component, and architecture components. Because, because why? Because uh, that means I was just back from the very good conference, VLSID. The VLSID is one of the top conference in the country and also in the world, right? Everyone is now b bringing AI closer to the system. So when we execute AI from the top application layer, that lot of Okay, goodness and lot of what I can say, lot of accuracy or lot of that means uh, that means in terms of speed of execution we lose. Now people are bringing AI closer to the system. Okay, they are making the computer architecture, okay, that oriented towards AI because because our normal ALU, right, with just uh, addition or multiplication is not so close to the AI which actually does the weight multiplied by inputs and then uh, then the accumulate. Uh, Fine, okay, okay. It's some accumulation, some spiking function, right? So those things are now coming in the architecture itself. So, so, so if you at least understand the basic processor architecture, basic processor pipeline, those are very important for you to learn at this particular level, right? Any processor pipeline, how it works, any instruction set, how it gets executed, right? How, how that is how I can form an algorithm. What are the what are the recipes I need to do algorithm and and you have to write multi-threaded programming because now you have systems which are supporting multiple cores you have systems which have GPU okay so don't use single threaded programming now okay so these are the stick to basics as first year okay second year you go to some of the advanced concepts from third year onwards you can actually look into some of the very deep tech stuff yeah thank you sir okay so let me start my lecture, okay? That means I will try to finish maybe 10, 15 minutes due to the scarcity of time, right? Rest you can, you can all come, come in my lab and you can discuss more, okay? So this is what is the quantum intelligence. So, so quantum computing is coming, that means already there. That when I started quantum computing research in Indian Statistical Institute in 2005, right? We didn't have the quantum computer, right? Uh, so, so my supervisor, uh, Professor Shushmita Shurkole and myself, we were just okay, just having something, okay, something in our thought that okay, these are the quantum computer can be. This may be some of the blocks of quantum computer. So let's try to improve some of the blocks of quantum computer. But when you are, you are now here, right, at the students at this particular 2024 in any of the batches in computer science, the, okay. So now physical quantum computer is there. Okay, I think some of your uh, okay, batchmates will be visiting a physical quantum computer, which is now coming up in Kolkata only. Okay, Kolkata teaches the crest is coming up with a five qubit quantum computer, and we have an invitation to visit there very soon. Okay, so okay, so IBM has already already announced they have a thousand qubit quantum computer. 
Rigetti has a physical quantum computer, right? And many of the Delft has a physical quantum computer. So there are a lot of, lot of, a lot of places are there, a lot of infrastructures are there who are really build the physical quantum computer. And CDAC in India is trying to build a physical quantum computer. I am very much in in that particular activity with CDAC. Okay. So now. So now what is happening in the computing when we tell quantum computers, right? This is the scenario which is happening, okay? So we started computer which were, if you go back to around 1960s or 1950s, 50s or 60s, there were something called electromechanical computers which were relay based computers and then came the analog computers. Okay, recently if you look one, one newspaper article came that Professor A.K. Choudhury, okay, who is the, who is the, who was the, Professor of Radio Physics Electronics Department of University of Calcutta, started the Computer Science Department of University of Calcutta, and in his name, our department, School of IT, was instituted. Right? He was the he was the first person who developed the analog quantum computer. That means analog computer in our country. There's an article very recently came. So now, so from that, from that particular age, it came to the age of silicon. Okay, from the valve diodes, from first the relay computers, then the vacuum diodes computers. Okay, okay, and those analog computers, and then came the transistor based computers, that is silicon transistor based computers, which is somewhere in the middle, right? And that and that is on silicon. So on silicon gives a gave with the years, right? It gives a huge amount of dimension reduction in transistor size. Okay. Can anyone tell what's the size of the present transistors? What what Intel is coming up with, right? Or AMD is coming up. Intel and AMD are the two big big players of processors, right? They design processors, okay? General purpose processors, okay? So what's the, what's the size of transistors? Any idea? All the silicon chips we use? It's of the, uh, please. Very good answer, yeah. Three nanometer, three nanometer is already there, but, but I think hardly there are any any chips available. So 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 chips you will you will mostly get in eight nanometers. Okay, that means larger to that fourteen nanometers, then twenty two nanometers, forty five nanometers, sixty nanometers, ninety nanometers, one eighty nanometers, one twenty nanometers. When I started, I am basically started my career as an EDA engineer in ORCAD, which is now Cadence. Okay, nineteen eight ninety nine. So when I started working in Cadence, our transistor feature size. Can you guess what was the feature size? It was 480 nanometers. So from 480 nanometers with 20 years, we have come to around, around three nanometers, which is exactly following the Moore's law. Okay, okay, the size becomes half in every 18 months. Okay, number of transistors gets doubled in every 18 months, whatever you say. Okay, it follows the Moore's law, but we break the Moore's law when we go to this scenario. So, so now when we go to a three nanometer transistor, we are already hitting the one atomic layer transistor. So the so transistor itself is now one atomic layer. So now the question is wh whether we will still continue to do with transistor or we try to see that whether we can use the atomic state or subatomic states of course, that means of your, of your matter. Uh, because if we hit that, then they are governed by different laws of mechanics, which are called quantum mechanics. Okay, still we prevail with classical mechanics, right? In the classical transport theory, right? When we see the electron transport theory in our semiconductors. Okay, but, uh, but now we go to the quantum states. The quantum states are not visible because we are not identifying each individual subatomic particles in matter. We are working with a bulk phenomenon, right? And in the bulk phenomenon, the atomic states gets canceled out. And we cannot see the uh, see the real quantum transitions. Okay, okay. So fine. And, okay. And what is uh, what is computing? Can you tell very very simply what is computing means? Yeah, please. Yeah. So this is user's perspective, but from system perspective, it is a particular. Yeah. It is a particular system which can update its memory state. That's all, right? That means it is. A, that means it's a, so. So how it will update its memory state in different cycles of operation? That is given by the program logic. Okay, so program logic actually tells you that that means how the memory states will be updated, and you start with a particular memory state, which is your 
which is the initialization state, right? And you end that certain memory state, what is the readout state of your computer, right? And inter and and in between, it is just you have to update the memory states. So now any computer systems, I, okay, okay, a computer system I can develop if I have a mechanism to represent data and I have a mechanism to update the data in a controlled fashion. Always, because you require a program to update data, otherwise it will be a random data, okay, random, random process, okay, right? You need to a logical process, which means that your memory states will be updated based on a particular, on a particular flow, right, on a particular data flow or control flow, uh, okay, sequence. So now this is what is quantum computers. So now can we devise a technology where we can represent memory states by the states of, the, okay, this atomic part, subatomic particles, right okay and then are there operations enough so that we can actually change their states right if you can do that then we can tell that hey we have found a, dif a different type of computing technology right obviously we will go to that investment if there is an advantage okay if there is no advantage of of what we are getting now right why i will go to okay so, so come back to this maybe within the next two, three minutes. So this is what is a physical quantum computer. Okay, if you look, this is a physical quantum computer. Your quantum chip actually resides here, right? A lot of your, your channels, cooling channels, a lot of your interconnects comes, but now it is getting smaller and smaller. Okay, this is a quantum, IBM quantum computer maybe five years ago or six years ago. Okay, if you see the present quantum computer, it is, it is much more compressed. Okay, people, people are people are enhancing the technology so that the wires are all 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 getting very within the chip instead of making so many wires out of the chip. Okay, so that's that's the thing. Okay, oh, sorry. So so when we say quantum computer, obviously we have to explore or we have to leverage the some of the inherent quantum principles. Okay, quantum mechanical principles. Right, and they are actually duality is one of the thing which we know that uh, that we uh, okay from the duality we know that the okay particle can produce interference because interference is a wave property, right? So particle particles at this level of matter can interfere right because these are not particles these are basically waves, okay? So we have interference, we have superposition, and we have entanglement. These are the three things which are which are never found in classical domain classical domain of matter and can only be found in the in the quantum domain of matter and if you can exploit this to do some useful computation and we can show that okay these are there is some betterment enough betterment then then computer scientists will be interested to use this as uh, uh, these systems for computing okay so let's see how it works okay so now if we look into this scenario of the memory state, uh, because again I say that the memory state is a very important part in entire computing. Uh, because ultimately a user, user only sets a memory state at the initialization memory state and user reads the memory state, right? User cannot actually get into the computing process. Okay, fine. So, so the memory state, what we do in a particular classical system is called a bit. Right, so the bit can have two values, any bit, okay? One is a high, which is logic value one, logic state one, and one is low, which is logic state zero. Right, whereas a qubit, okay, can also have, obviously the two values are there, zero and one, but a qubit state, okay, this is a very, a very unique, right? This particular sphere is called a Bloch sphere. And the Bloch sphere has a radius of one. Okay, why radius of one? Because any vector from here, which comes from the Bloch sphere, represents a quantum state. And the Bloch sphere has three axes, x, y, and z. So the, so, the, so the vector can rotate across, okay, okay, x, y, and z axis, right, and can change its states. Okay, so what I said, right, I said that if I can, if I can represent a data state, and if I can, if I can, do an update of the data state, then I can do computation. Okay, so the update of this state is very simple, right? In the case of a quantum computer, because uh, because 
because any of the any of the vector space which are the surface of the dot sphere, right, are determined. Okay, uh, they are called superposed states, right, and they are defined in combinations of the two basis states. In a simple case, if you are going for the z basis, so because they are active, if you are going for a z basis, the decomposition will be in terms of zero and one. Every state has a composition of zero and one state in the z basis. And similarly, if you are going for an x y state, which is this and this, sorry, the x axis, which is this axis, right? It goes with a basis which is actually zero plus one and zero minus one states. So it has a composition if it, that means any any of the vectors can be also represented on the x axis on the x basis with a combination of zero plus one states and a zero minus one state. Okay, so they are called. Okay, these are called up, up and down states, right? And these are called this type of states. Okay, so, so this is also one of the new thing in quantum computer that the the state is defined in terms of the basis, right? And this is very important when we go into the quantum cryptography or quantum communication, because in normal cryptography, what we do, we actually encrypt our data, right? We actually jumble up our data. Okay, so that anybody takes the data cannot make out what is there. Okay, the message is jumbled up. So, okay, ciphering the message means you use a key to actually jumble up the message, right? And do, uh, that means and any if cannot get it. In the case of quantum, it is not only the data, you also have to know the basis. So if you measure a quantum state in basis X, that means and if you measure the same quantum state in basis Z, the values will be different. So it is so difficult to actually get uh, information out of a quantum state. So you have to know what is that means. Okay, that means you also have to know the basis of measurement. So actually, in the case of quantum communication, a, pu a public channel you can use for key exchange because your basis are random. So with a random basis, you can generate a random string of data because basis is so important in the quantum. Okay. Uh, so, in terms of technology, how these quantum states are defined, these are different types of tech, different, different technology supports different type of qubits, okay? Uh, but though the most stable, most stable is still the superconducting qubit, right? And, and, and photon is, is, a, is the optical quantum computer. They use the photon polarization states, right? The superconducting qubit, X, that means walk in the direction of the current in a superconducting loop. There is a magnetic field and the current uh, movement of the current gives the qubit, right? And the others are, okay, uh, people are working on the spin of atomic nucleus, which is basically ion trap and all these things people are working, okay? So there are different types of technologies and, okay, different, okay. So now this is another, another very important thing. So, so two, two important things are shown here, okay? So as I say, that if a vector is here, it can be it can be decomposed into the two bases. So if it is a this is a this is a pure one vector, but this is a superposed vector psi. Okay. And now you can tell that now the another difficulty here is that okay, and we try to make a big vector. Okay, this vector will collapse either here or on here. So when you Measure this, it will be either recorded as zero at one. Depends that what probability is there. What is the decomposition coefficient, right? If it has a so the equal decomposition is one by root two for one and one by root two for zero, and then there is completely random. So you so you measure once you will get zero, and then measure one again you will get one. But you can also make a little bit different. Okay, you can make a, a make the amplitude of the coefficient of one a bit higher and zero a bit lower, or vice versa. Then the probability of getting it in one will be higher, or probability of getting it in zero will be higher. So this is this is what actually directly leads to the concept of measurement, and this directly leads to the concept of the classification. What we do in machine learning. Okay, so what we do in machine learning. In machine learning, we try to we have two ways, and we try to assign the probability of a particular feature vector right, to one of the vectors. So that you can tell that if, if this data is represented by this feature vector, 
right? And this feature vector aligns with this label maximum. So, so this is soft map, right? So in soft map we give a probability, right? So if we if we if we actually uh, okay try to make a probability of this particular class for this particular uh, feature vector, this becomes high or low. So this measurement orientation directly can give you a sort of notion that what I can do when we have quantum states representing the feature space, and then with some operators, okay, okay that, means, that means as it is a learning parameter, that means as it is a supervised model, in a supervised model we know that this, 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 this particular vector, okay, this particular multidimensional vector, right, is of level one, and this multidimensional vector is of level zero. Okay, simple binary classification problem. So you know that, so what you can do, you can make a quantum circuit which can, which can automatically, okay, take this, take this multidimensional vector, and multidimensional vector is very easy to represent in quantum. Okay, why? Because, because more and more qubits you take, more and more space increases. Okay, okay, one qubit can give you two, two features, one is dependent by the zero basis and one is one basis. Two qubit can give you four features. So the number of features you can represent is of the order of two to the power n uh, compared to n qubits you invest. Okay, this is not there in classical. Classical is linear. Okay, number of features you, you have, right, and number of components you have is linear. Here it is, okay, the exponential. So you can represent a larger feature space with a lesser number of qubits, right, okay, to work with because this is the thing. And then what you do, as it is a supervised learning, you can use, you can use or you can train your, your quantum circuit so that when these vectors are measured, the probability of level zero is higher. And when these vectors are measured, probability of level one is higher. And if you can make this quantum circuit, Right, the quantum machine learning works very fast. Okay, so that's where superposition, interference, measurement helps. Okay, the second one is entanglement. What I shown here, entanglement is directly used in communication. So in communication, what I do in communication, I try to generate a message and I try to pass the message to the party B with a communication channel. Quantum entanglement is such a thing that if you have entangled two particles and then you take take them separated away. Then, then if you measure a measure a, a one particle, you can know what is the content of the other. Either the content is same, depends on what type of entanglement you have done, or the content is directly opposite. Okay, you can just take a take an inverse of the data here, and you can find what is B. Depends on how you have measured this, right? And more and more multi multi bit entanglement you do, more and more multi party communication you can do. You can pass the same message to more of them, but it is costly. It is technically, it is, it is, it is feasible, and it is not so challenging like quantum processing, but it is costly because you have to have some sort of bell state generator, which will generate the entanglement among multiple particles. So you have the same bell state generator, which will actually be used to make a multi-party entanglement. And if you can do that, then you can communicate with all of them without actually uh, okay, doing much effort, okay? So I think I will stop here due to the time, right? I think, I think there's not much time I will close. So there are a lot of things are there. Status of quantum computing is very promising. You see that all the big giants are doing this. IBM, Microsoft, actually good point is all my students who have done quantum computing, they are all getting into good industries or good postdocs. Okay, so this is a very, very, a very happening domain, right? All of you should, all of you should actually Okay. Yeah. Take take okay. Take efforts to okay to go through that, and uh, right. We have done uh, that. These are already uh, the, uh, the IBM is uh, IBM is a good to follow, right? If you are doing quantum computing, IBM is obviously good to follow. Okay. Okay. Nvidia is coming very strongly. Okay. In quantum computing. Uh, okay. These are the two platforms you are coming. Amazon is there. Amazon is also 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 very strongly coming in quantum computer. You have the Amazon bracket. Right, in the NVIDIA CUDA quantum, right, IBM Kiskit. So all these three are very strong cloud verticals where you can actually actually run. IBM gives the physical machine, right? NVIDIA doesn't have the physical machine, they only give the simulations. Amazon gives physical machine for multiple, par uh, multiple parties. 
they have IBM, they have Rigetti, uh, they have Penilen, all multiple quantum systems they can offer, okay? Uh, yeah, so a lot of things are there. We have the, uh, the, the quantum machine learning is now the buzzword. I've just given a little bit example to you that how this, this is not so easy because, uh, okay, these are called parameterized quantum circuit, how you try to take it from the input state to the measurement state in between parameterized quantum circuits comes up and these parameters may again be optimized using classical, but you have to remember that when you do this is your training phase. Okay, that means in your actually execution or inference engine will be pretty fast because you can take the inference over a large amount of data at one shot which the classical computer cannot do. Okay, so these are all, that means we have a lot of uh, things that I'm just keeping, we, uh, uh, we have got the IBM researcher access award the first in India due to this, this algorithm which was developed by my student Mrithunjai. He is now the principal, uh, principal engineer uh, okay, for HCL technologies in quantum domain. So we developed the first quantum ant algorithm, right? The full quantum ant algorithm. Okay, it's a big story. I will not come to that story. It's a big, big, a big, uh, a big long, okay, long, what I can say, long collaboration with IBM, which ultimately resulted this particular thing to, uh, uh, thing to work out. A lot of applications are coming up in optimization, logistics, finance, okay, new domains are coming up. IBM has given a very beautiful landscape. 1,000 qubit already they have announced this and they have a target of 5,000 qubit by 2025. Okay, so let's see how it works out. Oh, we have a, we have very good quantum computing researchers, but as you know, university, what happens, a bunch of researchers join, uh, they do fantastic work and they leave, right? And then the next researcher joins. So now we are in that phase. Uh, some of your, some of your students are also helping that particular point that they are also coming as interns and joining my group and new PhD students are joining. Uh, right, we have collaboration, strong collaboration with NVIDIA, IBM, Amazon, CDAC. So you can, uh, who are interested, you can work. We have a, uh, we have a startup also, QRD Lab. Actually, uh, Shion, Shion, who is your ex-student, he's now one of the director of this particular QRD Lab. It passed from one series of students to the next series of students. Okay, so QRD Lab is a startup from, uh, from our group. Okay, uh, so thank you. So due to the uh, limitation of time, I restricted my talk. A lot of things are there. So maybe one, two hours lecture, one day will be good. Yes, any questions? Yeah. Little bit, I think, <laughs> new topic, very new topic, I understand. Very new topic, but uh, 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 there's a beautiful lecture series you can go through, uh, the David, uh, David Doish of Oxford. Very, uh, uh, very beautiful lecture series, you can listen to that. Okay, quantum, okay, very preliminary of quantum computing. They have started working with this GPU, right? You have started, right? They will now work with NVIDIA team and they will also start work with NVIDIA team very soon. But they are working with a different problem. They have a different problem. Lot of resources are available, right? In our university, ISI is also have a group, uh, right? And the bigger group works in uh, the CDAC. CDAC Bangalore does the entire software stack. Uh, CDAC Pune does communication and system integration for quantum hardware, HPC. Quantum HPC is done by CDAC, uh, CDAC Pune, right? And CDAC, uh, CDAC Kolkata and partner is also coming up in some way. So, so IBM announces a lot of these contests time to time for students. You can go into that. But having said so, quantum company is not only the only domain. You can get into computer vision, large language models, coming in so good way, IOT is coming in so good way, right, we are organizing an annual IOT conference just started uh, this year, that is AI for sustainable agriculture, uh, which is basically IOT, robotics, uh, uh, right, AI, okay, to support smart agriculture. So next year also conference will happen, this is collaboration with CDAC Kolkata and Patna. 
So maybe next year also we will do the same conference. So you can also focus on AI for sustainability that involving IoT. We also have a good, uh, good IoT lab in our, in our department. Okay. Security is also very important. Security, cryptography, crypto analysis, these are also very important domains. Because a lot of domains are there. It's not that I, because we do have time, I have to speak on quantum computing, but a lot of uh, okay, things are there you can work with, right? But you try to work, try to, try to keep yourself engaged. Don't be, uh, don't be sitting idle. We have so many things are there now to work on, right? Okay, so for me, I, the, my, some of my students tell, the, some of my students know that when I tell that, I tell that what is your hours of the day? If the student comes with tells at 24 hours, I say it's wrong. You have to make 48 hours. Okay, so your day should be 48 hours. So whatever normal people do in 24, uh, okay, okay, that means do, uh, okay, do, you have to, you have to do double. Okay, then only you can excel. So that, uh, so that you have to try to manage, okay? So 24, 24 hours duration, about 48 hours work. Okay, please. So thank you, thank you once again, yeah. Thank you, sir. Now we are at the very end of this beautiful informative session and I would like to end this session with a, with a vote of thanks. It is my great pleasure to present a vote of thanks of the seminar towards quantum intelligence addressed by Professor Amlan Chakraborty, Professor and Director A.K. Choudhury School of Information Technology, Calcutta University. Thank you very much, sir, uh, for delivering such important speech. Um, in his speech, he mentioned computers uh, are uh, progressing in a very first manner. We are uh, introducing more important subjects in our syllabus computer vision also getting um, important uh, now new dimensions he also mentioned that the most important challenges uh, is you have to learn more and more students need to upgrade themselves continuously more importantly few few courses like this database networks architecture algorithms uh, basics of computers, these are the most important topics you should cover uh, properly. Now, uh, students can join in PhD program uh, after completion of their uh, graduation. He also mentioned the process, how students can develop uh, their knowledge. He also mentioned about quantum computers uh, already in, uh, introduced by IDM, IBM. Um, he discussed the present size of transistors, which is uh, in one dimension layer. His speech on qubit will be very much helpful for the students. I would like to thank our principal Maharaj for the whole arrangement. And I also like to thank our fellow uh, faculty members of their efforts to make this event possible. Last but not the least, I thank, I like to thank our beloved students for their active participation in this session. I sincerely thank each of everyone here for making this session a success with this gracious presence. Thank you very much. <laughs>